Hello, this is David E. Hilster. I am a critical thinker, dissident scientist, and if you are not buying exactly what mainstream physics and cosmology are selling, then this is the place for you. There are thousands and thousands of scientists around the world, including people with PhDs from MIT, Harvard, Stanford, who have been working for decades outside the mainstream and who have identified problems, fixed those problems, and are proposing new theories and models all the time. You won't find anything else like this on YouTube or the internet, so be sure you want to subscribe below, hit the subscribe button and that little bell next to it so you'll be notified when our next video comes up. And today we're going to be talking about something in a way that no one talks about on the internet, but I believe the majority of us believe this when we read it. We science lovers who are, don't have to put money or food in money in our bank accounts or food on our table because we make a living from physics so we can't rock the boat. So let's take a look at this article and of course the uh, headline says it all and I couldn't resist it because two of my favorite people in science are in, in this uh, article. Stephen Hawking explains what happened before the Big Bang. Commentary, the physicist, the physicist tells Neil deGrasse Tyson what came before the Big Bang. Was there anything there? Was there nothing there? Was there even a there there? Okay, I, you know, I mean, the guy's got to make this into whoever's writing this, the author, Chris, uh, boy, don't try to pronounce that last name, but Chris, he's trying to, you know, be, be a writer. So let's go on and take a look at this article. And one of the things that you're going to see as critical thinkers, and this is why we, I go through and do this, is because we critical thinkers look, look at this stuff pretty much logically and, use, and listen to the words they say and try to interpret those w words logically. So let's take a look at this. It says, it's easy uh, to see quite a few scientific theories as relying on a decision as to when something began. Then they say, the universe, for example. Okay, most of us outside the mainstream are going to say, no, the universe has always been here. How can you not, there is, there is no way conceptually I can understand a concept that there wasn't a universe. We don't have to be there. We don't have to see the tree in the forest on another planet for it to exist. What is this idea? This is a mystical idea. This isn't science. Science will tell you that, in fact, um, this there are physical things in the world and these physical things happen. But to tell us that there wasn't anything there or that the universe began, I, I don't understand that. There, it's so far from uh, a logical reality for me, I cannot... Um, Imagine. He says, before the Big Bang, and there's uh, Mr. Stephen Hawking, there wasn't even a whimper. Again, you know, they're being very poetic about this, and I don't know if that's to try to, try to fool us, or they're trying to fool themselves, or they're trying to be poetic. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's ego where they want to be, you know, uh, great thinkers and, and say things in elegant ways. You know, myself, not, not, not say not like myself who stumble over my own words. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, we heard about a lot about the Big Bang. It's the moment when something impossibly tiny began to grow over the next billions of years to become the universe that we know, at least partially today. Now, I'll have to give the author some credit here because he's saying, well, you know, that we know today, at least partially, become... Uh, so he's at least saying, okay, you know, this is what we know. It's not everything, you know, let's not be so arrogant. So that's kudos to him. Um, Neil deGrasse Tyson on his star talk show sat his fellow physicist Stephen Hawking down and asked him for his view. Now, this is another thing. You notice how um, uh, the author and Neil Tyson, well, it's the author in this case, says his fellow uh, physicists. That's like, oh, I'm going to put Neil deGrasse up there with, with Stephen Hawking. Now, no offense, I don't think Stephen Hawking is one of the greatest physicists of all time in any sense of the word. In fact, don't even, you can go, go read A Brief Moment in Time and you tell me how good a book that is. But uh, anyways, uh, you can see there's an elevation thing. There's this ego thing. Fellow physicist Stephen Hawking. Because, you know, of course, that's going to ingratiate himself, the author, to Neil deGrasse Tyson, who has an ego probably the size of a super giant nova that's about to explode. One of those giant 
suns that make our sun look like a pea. That's that's about the size of this guy's ego. But anyways, let's keep going. Ha uh, Hawking offered a simple and direct answer. Nothing was around before the Big Bang. Can't buy. I, I, you know, nothing. You can't get something coming from nothing. You know, unless you're a mis you're mystical, unless you believe in magic. So if you're a physics and science lover, sorry, nothing was around before the Big Bang. Well, what about that little tiny, something impossibly tiny began to grow? That wasn't around? See, the, see, see what happens when you actually use your critical thought on these things? My goodness. Let's just keep going. It just gets, gets worse. Einstein's theory of relativity insists space and time form a continu continuum curved by the matter and energy in it. Of course, time, space and time form a continuum. My father said something very interesting, the particle guru. Check them out, youtube.particle.guru. Check them out. Hey, people are finding out about them. Even in universities, interest in stuff, so you better not miss out. He talks really great stuff. Put, he can get things down to essence. That's my father. And of course, if you look at this, he said, my father said something very profound. A continuum, continuum can't apply force. In fact, a continuum can't bend. There is A continuum is perfectly dense. If it's perfectly dense, you can't bend something perfectly dense. It doesn't happen. It can't apply a force. So that's what we critical thinkers look at. So when we're reading through this, we're just saying, well, first of all, continuums in physics doesn't exist in reality and physics of it. And the theory of relativity, of course, we know has a lot of problems in space and time to put together to make something like a kid. <laughs> well, use this hand because I go over the graphic. Uh, ordinarily, real time is replaced by imaginary time. I, I need to get a plastic gun. I mean, one of those guns that look for real, but I'll probably like get um, uh, in trouble. So I'll just use my head again. I will do a double barrel. <coughs> so uh, ordinary time is replaced by imaginary time, he said. Honestly, that happens to me all the time. That's where the uh, author... You notice the author is sort of a little bit making light of this because... Let's face it, that is bizarre. And of course, a he, who is he to question a man in a wheelchair? Because first of all, it's handicapped. So you couldn't say he's a bad scientist because that would be pol politically incorrect. But he's a bad scientist. Anyways, that's our opinion because of uh, uh, all of us who have been outside the mainstream. So let's keep moving forward because it just gets worse. It gets, yes, it gets worse. Uh, for Hawking, however, imaginary time behaves like a fourth dimension of space. Space is defined by three dimensions. We can have all kinds of things happening in it. We can put mathematics on top of it. I love mathematics. Oh, Dave, yeah, I have a degree in mathematics, Bachelor of Science in mathematics. I love math. I really do. And, but even our mathematics is flawed. Don't believe me? Hey, go read um, Eric. Uh, oh, my gosh. Oh, Peter Erickson, oh, the man on uh, the square root of negative one. Got to watch that. Hey, got to watch that one. Go go see that one. But anyways, there's only three dimensions. No, the four, di you know, like a fourth direction of space. Think about it, people. Now, imaginary time is already ridiculous. And then you say it behaves like a fourth direction of space. These people, this is Harry Potter. This is any better than Harry Potter. This is probably worse than Harry Potter because at least Harry Potter admits that it's all make-believe. These people are saying this. Now, I don't know if they believe it, really. Um, their fame and fortunes do depend on it, like Neil deGrasse Tyson, who laughs at the idea that Einstein could be wrong. Well, go laugh at the GPS guy who has 30 patents saying, well, GPS shows relativity to be flawed. No, no, we just have to fix it. No. Okay, let's keep going. Four-dimensional four curved surface. I'm sure there's graphics that can show this sort of, but you know what happens? All the graphics are in three dimensions. Isn't that weird? Or they're two, two, two dimensional representations of three dimensions. You don't see graphs of fourth dimensions. But wait, maybe they'll help explain it. Maybe I'm David, you've got to read the rest of the article and you can find out because here comes, it's going to be coming the sixth dimension then. Oh, the universe, uh, 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 insisted Hawking's, has no boundaries. Okay, so the universe starts out as a peak, goes out only so far, and 
space and time or whatever is expanding with it. But now Hawking says it has no boundaries. Let's just go on. Uh, I, I'm going to I'm going to become I don't know uh, I don't know something else other than a person who likes science if I keep if, if these things keep coming out um, one can regard imaginary in real time as the beginning at the South Pole which is a smooth point of space time I told you it's going to get worse I mean you can have space time which is already a travesty because it's nothing you can't take time which is really a, a measurement of movement or movement itself in space which is the three-dimensional place where things exist which is nothing where things exist in put it together and call it space time regarding imaginary in real time at the beginning of the South Pole which is smooth a point of space time I mean regarding imaginary in real time shoot me at, at the beginning at, beginning at the south pole which is a smooth point of space time oh my gosh again shoot me uh nor normal laws of physics hold what does that mean there are there are abnormal laws of physics well this comes from the idea that bef during during our universe <laughs> This is our universe. You know, the next one coming along is going to have different rules. They're going to, you know, like, if I do this, it goes sideways instead of down. That's where that comes from. Nothing around the big... And it says, of course, there is nothing... Uh, there is nothing south of the South Pole. So there is nothing around before the Big Bang. If I were to talk to, like, let's say, sixth graders and showed them a globe and say, okay, South Pole, let's get this right. This is the South Pole. This is the South Pole on this wonderful expanding Earth model right there. So n below here, there's nothing. And so before the Big Bang, there's nothing. Because the, 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 well, I don't understand that. So uh, it's a smooth arting, but, it's, uh, but we're mere humans. Hard for us to define, uh, explain potentially inf uh, a potentially infinity we don't entirely grasp, which of course we, outside the mainstream, know infinity is very important. So I guess this is real regard imaginary in real time beginning here. So right, right here is imaginary time in real time. You got that now? Now, now do you understand everything? So he goes on, he says, humans are far less bright than, than they, they think they are. Now, this, this unfortunately has the intention, has one intention, but gives a completely different one. And what is he really trying to say? He's trying to say that, you know, we're just beginning to understand this stuff. And we're going to see where this takes. And maybe he's going to say, you know, these guys are nuts. Neil deGrasse Tyson's nuts. Uh, Stephen Hawking is nuts. This is all nuts. Let's see. And maybe we're, we're just far, far less bright than we think. The truth is, that's the truth. It's not, the universe isn't complicated. Our theories and our ideas are complicated. They don't make sense. The words we use don't make sense. You can't make logic out of the words that are here. They contradict each other. They don't, you, 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 the idea that this is curved surface and the Big Bang and it's the fourth dimension that smoothly goes up. It says, there's too much we don't know. So perhaps one day aliens will soon descend upon us to inform us that our ideas and fi uh, of physics are laugh laughably rudimentary. We outside the mainstream are already saying that. We don't need aliens. Of course, we're treated like aliens, but we don't need aliens. We ourselves know these things. And then you get to the, the bottom part and you realize that this guy is buying this uh, buying this not as maybe maybe hawking is wrong no look where he goes rudiment and that we don't understand the existence of another thousand dimensions of life the universe and everything of course that comes from the hitchhiker's guide of the galaxy to the galaxy but he's saying and they, we don't understand another thousand dimensions of life. 
this is the most depressing part of all of this. If we continue to put this jump jibber jabberish so that um, the prime minister of Canada gets on and pretends he knows all about uh, uh, quantum mechanics to show that he's smarter than Trump, when quantum mechanics has so many problems, I can't even begin to start. Quantum mechanics makes this stuff look like hardcore Newtonian physics. Yet, here we go, we continue. And this guy, who is an author, says, you know, we don't understand. We're only four dimensions, maybe six. Oh, if we go to strings, 11. But these beings will come down and say, there are a thousand dimensions. When in reality, there are only three dimensions, will only be three dimensions. And we have models that only use three dimensions and Newtonian physics to describe all these things, including all these quantum mechanics experiments, which they can't explain. It's explaining light and gravity, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, the particle model is one of them. My dad and I are working on it. See uh, youtube.particle.guru. Take a look at Jeff Yee. He has an ether theory. Look at, take a look at the universe infinity, uh, the infinity universe theory by Borkert. Uh, take a look at other theories that we have on our website. We have lots of books and uh, the force equations by Dr. Uh, Bill Lucas who has unified all the forces and a better force equation. So if you're more in the traditional sense and like the force equations, there you go, much better. So we're, we, we've got over this. And remember, don't take what my, my word on this. Stay critical, stay thinking. I'm David Hilser. I'm your science therapist. I am going to get you to the promised land of becoming a critical thinker. Ciao for now.